Well, good evening and welcome to the Discovery Bible Study here at the Beltline Church of Christ. We're glad that you joined us today. We are in Judges chapter 20. We're going to be wrapping that up and then next week we will put a nice little neat bow on our study of Judges. Yay. I'm so glad, <laughs> Brian. Finally. Yeah, finally. I'm so glad you've joined us for all this. I pray it's been a blessing to you. And I hope today we can find something good. I, it's going to be a little tough today. Yes. This is a, a, an interesting story. Uh, to It's kind of the rest of the story from last week. And so uh, here's hoping that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find a direction and go with it. So Trey, Judges chapter 20, 29 to the end of the tr chapter from the New Living Translation. Take it away. So the Israelites set an ambush all around Gibeah. They went out on the third day and took their positions at the same place as before. When the men of Benjamin came out to attack, they were drawn away from the town, and as they had done before, they began to kill the Israelites. About 30 Israelites died in the open fields along the roads, one leading to Bethel and the other leading back to Giba. Then the warriors of Benjamin shouted, We're defeating them as we did before. But the Israelites had planned in advance to run away so that the men of Benjamin would chase along the roads and be drawn away from the town. And when the main group of Israelite warriors reached Baal Tamar, they turned and took up their positions. Meanwhile, the Israelites hiding in ambush to the west of Gibeah jumped up to fight. There were 10,000 elite Israelite troops who advanced against Gibeah. The fighting was so heavy that Benjamin didn't realize the impending disaster. So the Lord helped Israel defeat Benjamin, and that day the Israelites killed 25,100 of Benjamin's warriors, all of whom were experienced swordsmen. Then the men of Benjamin saw that they were beaten. The Israelites had retreated from Benjamin's warriors in order to give those hiding in ambush more room to maneuver against Gibeah. Then those who were hiding rushed in from all sides and killed everyone in the town. They had arranged to send up a large cloud of smoke from the town as a signal. And when the Israelites saw the smoke, they turned and attacked Benjamin's warriors. By that time, Benjamin's warriors had killed about 30 Israelites, and they shouted, We're defeating them as we did in the first battle. But when the warriors of Benjamin looked behind and saw the smoke rising into the sky from every part of their town, the men of Israel turned and attacked. At this point, the men of Benjamin became terrified because they realized disaster was close at hand. So they turned around and fled before the Israelites towards the wilderness, but they couldn't escape the battle. And the people who came out of the nearby towns were also killed. The Israelites surrounded the men of Benjamin and chased them relentlessly, finally overtaking them east of Gibeah. And that day, 18,000 of Benjamin's strongest warriors died in battle. The survivors fled into the wilderness towards the Rock of Rimmon, but Israel killed 5,000 of them along the road. They continued to chase until they had killed another 2,000 in Gidom. So that day, the tribe of Benjamin lost 25,000 strong warriors armed with swords, leaving only 600 men who escaped to the Rock of Rimmon, where they lived for four months. And the Israelites returned and slaughtered every living thing in all the towns, the people, the livestock, and everything they found. They also burned down all the towns they came to. Wow. All right. A story. That's a very positive story <laughs> for us to tackle oh, today. <laughs> well, um, I, I, this is probably one of those stories that a lot of people will say, how could God allow that? Or um, the God of the Old Testament is so mean and the God of the New Testament is so different. You know, it's stories like this that cause people to have that untrue, but uh, to have that view of God. So as we think about our questions, what does this say? I guess that's question number one. I'll let you say it. I won't get out of my lane here. So. Question number one, what do we learn about God from these passages? What do we learn about God from these passages? Uh, I want to back up to, okay. to the last uh, section that we read. And if you remember, they went to, uh, to God and they said, yeah, go. He went to God and said, yeah, you go. And then the third time, they actually did what God wanted them to do. That They offered sacrifices, mm -hmm. they fasted, that they did according to God's will. And God said, today they will, 
that you will dominate. And, and, and God's hand is in this, and God allowed them to win. And what I love is it's, it's listing the, the thousands of soldiers of the Benjamin, Benjamin tribe that was dying, and it said, what, 300? 30. 30? Yeah. And it's, it's like when God is on your side, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So when you have hundreds of soldiers fighting and you only <laughs> lose 30, mm -hmm. and um, so God was there. God was present. Um, I mean, God, God's present no matter what is going on in our life. So many times we feel like God has left us. No. Uh, he's always there. He's He was there in that story. He's there with us today. I, I do think it's important to remember why this battle took place in the first place. Right. Yes. Um, you Absolutely. know, Benjamin had acted in a completely unholy and ungodly <laughs> way uh, in abusing this uh, prophet, whatever he was, or this priest, this guy's wife, and uh, showed no remorse in what they did. And... Uh, if they had stepped to the plate and uh, offered up the people who had done all of this, we wouldn't have got right. to this place. Um, but they were all for, always offered a way out. They, of course, they were, uh, because that's what God does. He, he's he's not his vengeance does not come uh, without uh, his vengeance is a last resort, yeah. not not a first resort. So this is not a first resort right. kind of thing. Right. And in fact, I think you know you see that this is the third battle. That, there's a lot going on yes. uh, with all of this, but I, I, it's an interesting story. But I, I do see if God was with them, why did they still lose thirty people? You know, and so there's 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 always going to be casualties, even with God fighting for you. There, there's going to be casualties in that, and and I don't know how to how to justify that in my head or work around that. But um, there, there's there's good that always suffers when 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 you, I, I don't know how to say that properly. The, I'm, those I'm struggling you, with my words. Those around you will be hurt due to others. There's actions. consequences, yeah. and sometimes the good get <clears throat> get wrapped up with the evil. I guess yes. that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, and, and we see that in the New Testament as well. Uh, that uh, that the good often get swallowed up by the, the craziness that that often goes around when God is absent. And again, I think we've said this for the last few weeks. This. This story shows what happens when men are left to their own resources right. and they do what they want to do rather than what God wants to do. Yeah. It always leads to violence. It always leads to destruction when God is pushed out of our lives yes. and when, he is, when we refuse to uh, be governed by his authority and we take authority in ourselves. Remember, there's no king in the land. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes, and this is where they ended up. And it is a... It is a um, I guess a judgment it is a prophecy in a sense it is it is just showing us this is what happens when you forsake the way of the Lord eventually it, it ends in violence and you see great God's grace you know just the fact that uh, these people are you know they, this is the this is the final you know they finally get this attack that actually works uh, because they have turned to God and uh, they're victorious at this point but even with the Benjamites um, there's 600 of them left there's grace. That's grace. I mean, there shouldn't be any of them left. This is not like this uh, instance of them, um, you know, doing what they did to that poor woman uh, was was just once, and, and that this was just the only thing that happened. These people are eat up with this type yes. of sexual sin and of right. violence against one another, and they have been uh, treating women this way for a long time. And God's judgment has come to bear on them for the way That's that they have. Point have hurt other people and have you know brought violence into other people innocent people's lives and so that's what this is let's not let's not let us let escape our memory that this is this is God's judgment and yet here's grace mm -hmm. even in the judgment and and it happened for a long period of time even the other tribes knew what was going on yeah. and they didn't stop it right. until that event yeah. so so oh, God so is here, but it's a, it's just, it is, it's a difficult, difficult book. And as we get to the end, as we've said over and over again, it just gets more dicey and more ugly and, and more sinful and more sad. Yeah. Uh, it's not and, your typical Hallmark movie. Mm -hmm. No, uh-uh, no. And that's why, you know, after this, after you finally get to the end of this book, you open up the next book, <laughs> which is Ruth, yes. and find, you, you find hope again. You find hope and you realize that... that God is going to return. God is going to uh, redeem his people even from their horrible ways. But at this point, you know, there's no light at the end of the no, tunnel right now. That's right. This is, this is a pretty dark day in, in Judah and Israel. Yeah. 
Well, let's uh, let's go on to question number two and see if we can pull something out for that. <laughs> Keith, what is it? Question number two. What do we learn about people from these passages? What do we learn about people from these passages? I want to go to the, the tactics of the battle. I'll, okay, and we're not told how the first two battles occurred. All we're told is that they, they lost. And I love this one, how they set up on both sides of the road to ambush. It's like they lured the people out of the city. And then it's like then they set the city on fire, not really city, but it's the smoke, and, and it, it, it caused so much confusion. And then, it, then it caused the, the other soldiers to jump in and fight. And, and what I love is they had that ability in them the whole time. Yeah. But it, it took something in them to step out and do something. And, and I think it was that last promise from God. It's like, today, Benjamin will be handed to you. Yeah. And it's like, so, so they realize, it's like, okay, God is saying we can do this. And they did it. God is telling us today, we can do so much amazing things, but how many times we sit back and say, uh, I don't think I can. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we well, we've remember. failed before. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, remember, God is always on our side. Now, now, he may tell us, not right now. Right. Or wait. Or, I don't know. But, um, I don't know, God doesn't really say it that yeah. way. But, <laughs> but, uh, but God is always there with us, and he always wants the best for us. And, and maybe not what we want out of life, but he always wants the best for us. I look at this, and I, and I, see, I see arrogance. Yeah. And this is why, other than God being with them, they were going to lose anyway, but God played on the arrogance of Benjamin. We're going to beat them like we did before. Hey, yeah. let's go run them down, right? Yeah. So in their arrogance, yeah. they chase after, and it's their arrogance that ultimately leaves their city defenseless. Yes. It's what causes the death of everybody in their city, yes. which is probably maybe even their own women and maybe even some children in that. We don't know. It doesn't officially say that, but it says everything, everything and everyone in the town was killed. And so their arrogance led them out into this battle to a, a further degree than they had gone the first two times. And the consequences of it were not only did most of them lose their own life, but their whole city was destroyed. Um, and so... Arrogance knows no bounds. I, I, what does it say about people? We, we, we have a tendency to, to think pretty highly of ourselves. Yeah. And, uh, and when we make decisions based on what we think yes. rather than what God thinks, that can lead to trouble. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we were just talking about this the other day. Sin, it keeps you longer than you wanted to stay. It uh, costs you more than you wanted to pay. And what was the other one? Sin always... <laughs> something else the point is it's sin this is why this is the root cause of all of this it's sinful it's it's just disgusting and it's uh it's human nature to chase after our own desires and and what we think is right we these people have got been it. enticed sin keeps you longer than you want to be there sorry okay <laughs> and so here you go uh these guys they uh you know they, they they're us and and we do the same things. Think about it when we when we want something and we're not we're not looking for God's will. We're looking for our will, and we're chasing after it under our own strength. And we try and we try again. And and, and we may even try to cloak it in some kind of well, I really hope this you know, or maybe even a prayer possibly. Right. But we don't ever ask if this is what God wants for us. We just think this is what I want, and that's all that really matters. Yeah. Well, we need to back up. And, and remember that God's will is what's going to be done. He is sovereign. And, uh, and so, so, yeah, pride, of course, arrogance. It just makes you wonder, were there anybody in, in all of these thousand, 25,000, was there anybody who said, now why, did we, why are we fighting with our, right. our family? Why are we doing this? Why are we defeating them? Why are they attacking us? Why would they do this? You know, did, did anybody reason among themselves and say, we're the bad guys in this? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know. I, it just, it, it's a great question. It, it, it seems like somebody would have asked, who's the good guys in this? Yeah. And, and I don't know, at this point, are there any good guys? Yeah, I, I don't think there are. And, and I, I like what you said because I think sometimes we cloak our desires with a little God talk. Yeah. yeah. And instead of being like Jesus, I mean, we're, we're in resurrection season, if you want to call yeah. it that. Uh, well, every Sunday should be resurrection Absolutely. season, but you know we're, when our People world pauses yeah. to to remember the resurrection of Jesus. I mean, Easter's this Sunday, mm -hmm. and and you think about what he did in the garden. You know, it was not my will. Here's what I want, God. I would yeah. really like to avoid this, yeah. but not my will, but your will be done. There's none of that here. Yeah. There, there's none. no calling on it. This is my will, my will, my will, yeah. and this is what I want, and I'm going to go after it regardless. 
And so there's no, there's no pause, like you just said, to, to think about, okay, what, what's really going on here? Right. Or why, should I really be doing this? There's, yeah. You see, Benjamin, there's no calling on the Lord at all. There's, there's, there's none of that. And so I, I guess maybe the lesson for us is <clears throat> if you really, really want to do something, let's make sure that uh, what you're going to do lines up with the truth of Scripture. Absolutely. Uh, let's make sure that we're not just chasing our own will, chasing our own agendas, uh, but chasing his. What you is got? That well, you're people. getting into the third question. That's what I was going to say. So anyway. Right. <laughs> well, are we ready to move to question number three? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, let's move on to question <laughs> number three. Right. What is question three? Glad Keith? you asked. Uh, how will you put this past in your practice? How will you put this past in your practice? Okay, I'm cheating. I'm going back to last week's question, or last week's passage. And it says, um, and people Israel required the Lord for the ark. Uh, wrong place. Uh, they sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. That was before they went into the battle. before God said, uh, I will hand the Benjamin to you. What I like about the peace offering is, when we think peace, we think peace on our terms. But it's peace on God's terms. Basically, they're saying, it's like, okay, I have sin in my life. I will make peace with God. So, God, I'm sitting here saying, I am yours. I'm giving everything I have to you. I am worthless. You're God. I know that. And that was the turning point, in my opinion, on, mm -hmm. on, on the other tribes. Well, it was after that that they got victory. Yes, so I yes. would agree that's the turning so point. So I want to make sure I live my life that way. I want to make sure I understand that God is in charge. I am not. God is the God. I am not. And I need to take everything I have, every, all of my being, and turn to God and say, everything I have is yours, and let you work through me. That's good. And um, I thought you was going with that a minute ago. I thought, oh, man, you're fixing to ruin my thunder. So. Well, you know, I try to do that on a regular basis. <laughs> but anyway, so what do you see? Well, the sacrifices God desires are broken in a contrite heart. That's it. And so I want to make sure that I don't, I don't make these decisions in my pride and my arrogance and... and things that I want, I, I want to make sure that I have that, that contrite heart, that I am repentant, that I am seeking the will of God ahead of my own. And, and I think if, if I can consistently do that, I have moments, right? I have moments when I, it seems to be me and God are in tune and we're walking together and then there are other moments when I'm doing my own thing and asking God to bless what I want to do rather than saying, God, what do you want to do and how do we go about making that happen? So. Uh, recognizing that, having that broken and contrite heart when I recognize my own arrogance and sin, and then, uh, you know, trying to do His will in all things. That, that, that's the... That's good. That's huge. I just want to be more consistent, I guess, because I'm, not, I'm never going to get that perfectly right. And so, more consistent. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Right. Um, I'm on verse, uh, I guess, 40-ish, 40, 40 41. When they see the uh, the smoke rising from the the city, you know, mm -hmm. and it says that the men of Benjamin became terrified, and this is kind of like uh, in the story of the uh, prodigal son, you know, he comes to himself in the pig pen, you know, mm -hmm. he realizes what he's done, he come he, he comes to reality, mm -hmm. right? And here they are, they become terrified, they realize disaster is yes. close at hand, and what do they do? Fall to their knees and pray. <laughs> they keep going down the same road, right? That's they, a great point. Man, oh my. when you come to yourself, when you realize, oh, wait a second, I don't want to be here. This is not the place for me. This, this oh, is no. not going to end well. Yeah, when you, when fear should, could be a, a help to you at that point where you say, wait a second, where's, where's God? Yeah. Um, hit your knees and ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Humble yourself before God and, 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 Follow him rather than following yourself and your own desires. Uh, what a what a change! These these people in Benjamin they had just as much access to God's ear as anybody who they were fighting with. Gotcha. They are children of Israel. They are they are part of this this family, the family of God. And yet there is no prayer of repentance. There is no seeking his his um, help. Instead, it's just rebellion after rebellion after rebellion. And yeah. that's 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 the point at which they had come. Mm. Um, pray that's, that that's pray that we don't get to that point. Pray that we don't refuse to humble ourselves before him. I, like I do that. have one more. Go ahead if man. I can. Uh, well, you cheated the first time and went <laughs> okay. back to last week's <laughs> lesson. <Yeah>. So go <laughs> ahead. I'm doing this week's lesson. Uh, when they talk about killing all the beasts and animals and stuff, my dad was an alcoholic, and when he once he quit drinking, 
anywhere he went to eat, if they had like a liquor sign or anything dealing with liquor or beer, anything, he'd walk in and goes, nope, can't eat here, and we'd leave. And I used to always think, well, that's silly. It's like as long as you don't drink. But Daddy basically removed any temptation in his heart and his life of beer or drinking or mm -hmm. liquor. And, and to me, you say, well, why do they kill the animals? <laughs> well, if they kept the animals, then every day they look and say, oh, yeah, that's the, the animal we got from the tribe yeah. of Benjamin. And there's always been a remembrance there. When we stop sinning, okay, I know we're going to always sin it. We're always going to fail in our lives. But when we, when we stop or when we turn away, we need to make sure to remove all um, the symbols or, or all remembrance of that sin. Uh, if something is bothering us, we, we need to remove it far away from us so, so, so it does not lure us back in. And, oh, uh, isn't that what Jesus is saying when he says, pluck out your eye or cut off your hand? Right. Yes. He's like, get it away from yes. you. It's better to enter heaven maimed, so to speak, so you're than it is. Yourself. That's right. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot of truth to that. That's so we got to make sure we, we remove all temptations out of our heart, out of our mind. And our, out I think our sometimes, even though we may not be doing the act, we get as close to the line as we can. That's right. And we sit there and we say, hmm, it sure would be better to be over there, but I'm not going to do that. Right? <laughs> and yet there's going to be times when we cross that line if we get that close to it. That's so right. A barbed wire fence will grab you just as close as you can and without having to climb over. Some people say, oh, I'm going to straddle the fence. No. Mm, He's yeah. still going to get you. I always say Satan owns the fence, so don't straddle. <laughs> yeah, don't even right. get close. So. Well, question number four is always the same. Who else do you know that needs to hear this? Hope that you'll take this, uh, this uh, I don't know if we can call it a lesson or whatever this was today. I hope you can take it and share it with them and maybe start your own Discovery Bible study and, and just put in a good word for Jesus everywhere you go. So we're going to wrap up Judges next week. We'll tackle chapter 21, but we're so glad you joined us today. We hope you have a great week, and we hope to... Uh, See you back here next time as we wrap it all up. Take care. God bless.